And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Mexa, and Corey Sandin. And welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hookup, right here on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here with Rock Cod, Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters here right next to a very busy San Diego landing this morning. A lot of bluefin being unloaded this morning. Yeah. Before. Yeah. <laughs> Going on. We have the Captain Clowers team here. We have Captain Clowers and Jeremy Ray. Good. Good show, talking it's bait awesome, fishing, yeah. bluefin fishing, all kinds of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. And if you want to join us, you have a chance right now to get through on the phones. Yeah, it's been a busy morning, but we do. We have two open lines right now. We lost one during the break, so a great shot to get directly through right now. That's 213-432-1090. Your chance to talk to Jeremy, talk to Al. 213-432-1090. Not only are you going to get your questions answered, but also get a shot at winning that great prize. We're going to weigh an AFTCO fish care package, uh, courtesy of our good friends up at AFCO. It includes that AFCO Boker Filet Knife, an AFCO Knife Case, and an AFCO Filet Glove. So a really killer set Really good uh, set. for one lucky caller at the end of the show today. Or Texter. Again, the Text the Show option. Lots of text coming through. Today's been really dominated by text. Yeah. Uh, lots of really good text coming through, but still plenty of time. Another full hour to get yours in. That's only available through the Let's Talk Hookup app. And again, make sure you include your contact info uh, when you send that text in case you're the winner of that killer AFCO package. Yeah, And don't forget, you have a way better chance of win the prize if you get through on the phones. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, for sure, because we get a lot of text. We and we, lot, we're going to get to your of, calls. We, get we can't get to a lot of your texts, for sure. 213-432-1090. Got a great text from John Amir Mesa. Do you still do hoop netting program, Captain? Oh, oh, I remember that. Hoop that netters. So the last two years, we I did not do any hoop netting. This year, it was really slow until the end, all the rain and stuff. And it's just... You know, I don't enjoy it as much as I used to. You know, yeah. I'm not as young as I used to. <laughs> yeah. You, you do any of it, Jeremy? Yeah, we did a few uh, a few years ago. Yeah, you know, there was a couple of years when I first started with Al, we did them, but that schedule's brutal. Yeah, you know, hit the dock from a full day at six. And then leave the dock at seven, go hoop till midnight, one in the morning, then back at the it's boat a long at day. five for the next day. So it's it's pretty brutal. So the question is, will you still do it? Maybe. Uh, it's not completely out of the. Picture, yeah. Okay, so you I, could be talked into it. Well, one of the I'm, other, I, I, I'm waiting to see what I want to do. One of the other dynamics that's different about these last couple of years is the fishing season is just it is it has changed. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, for years and years and years, you started tuna fishing in June and sometimes not even until July. I and mean, how many times back in the day did we always say that? Well, you know. Bill Poole, you shoot the fireworks and you go catch your tuna. I mean, that was that was always the 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 slogan you would say when it was tough early season fishing. The season's rolling in March and in April yeah. now. I mean, it's just months earlier than it, it normally is. So what normally was something that just kind of took up some of the off season time, now when you have tuna that are here in December and then they're back again in March, it just doesn't leave much in the way of off season for uh, especially for a guy that's r- driving every day like. Like right. you guys' rigs are right. We have enough guys on the team now to get to 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 uh, handle it. You know, back in the day, I was doing everything myself. But um, like I said, there's a lots and lots and lots of people in the bay doing it, doing it. There's a lot of my areas. The militaries are really tightening up on it, which that's kind of one of the reasons why I kind of didn't do it the last couple of years. You know, <clears throat> when they take away a couple of your best areas, yeah. And there's uh, so many people doing and it. There's so many too. people doing it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a mess. You yeah, know? it's not as much fun as it used to be. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fun. for sure. Well, phones are packed up. Let's go ahead and jump into it, Rick. You got it, buddy. How about we talk to Rod? He's called us from Orange this morning. Good morning, Rod. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Still got you there, Rod. Well, looks like he may have dropped, so why don't we jump back into the phones and talk to Steve. Steve's calling us from Fallbrook. Steve, you hanging in there with us? Absolutely. Can you hear me? We got you loud Steve. and clear, buddy. Go ahead. Thanks, Steve. Uh, well, uh, good, good morning. Hey, uh, listen, I was really hoping to take advantage of that uh, Rollo's uh, sale next weekend, and I've got a question. I currently, I've got a uh, Fathom 40, and I've got a Calica 10. And I've got a couple older reels. I would like to complement it with um, 
something else. And right now I've kind of been thinking along the lines of a Speedmaster 2, and I was wondering what size you might uh, recommend for I do an annual trip on the Tony Reyes, and then if I get lucky, I get out a couple times uh, on an overnight. Well, I, I, I could jump in and take it. Since you already have a Fathom 40 and you have a TAC-10, if I was going to add a Speedmaster, it would probably be a 12. It would just be kind of completing the completing the range that you already have. Your Fathom 40 is going to be fishing your heavier line, 50, 60, 80 pound, and your TAC-10 could fish, you know, as light as 25 and 30 and as heavy as maybe 40. So, so what I'd be shooting for is something in that 30 to 50 pound range. Seems the only little hole in your arsenal. And a, a, a Speedmaster 12 or 16 depending on if you like a narrower reel or a little wider reel, would probably be what would kind of cover your bases. And great for Tony Reyes, you could drop or loop fish with it. You could fly line a mackerel with it. You could troll a Rapala troll, with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it'd be a, it'd be a good reel for, for what you're doing. So if it were me, I'd look at Speedmaster 12. All right, good question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Got a great question from Rory calling us from Rickyville, which is Lakeside. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, he says, do you boys ever target Corvina in the bay? Or is it just a luck thing, kind of a luck of the draw? Typically, 85% of the time, it's a luck of the draw. If the bait barge has um, gets anchovy and it's in the right time of year, I'll tank up and go back and smash them Corvina. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and what's the bright time of the year? Spring? Right now. Right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the water temperatures are not too hot and not too cold. Chovy right, right could now, happen this time. It's Chovy time. in the back bay is pretty phenomenal. Um, I took Dr. Chris back there, that one mi- mimic. Yeah, Dr. Chris mimic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we caught some big fat ones. I used to, <clears throat> for fun, f- with me, Karina fishing, I go out right, right before dark in my ranger. Put the trolling motor down and go throw spooks around the beaches, you know. Wow. I don't do that for money, but... Um, um, that's fun fishing top I'll top bet. water spook yeah. fishing in, oh, bay, yeah. in the bay. And when that stuff is in the back bay and on the anchovy, they'll they'll eat the surface they'll eat the surface plug too. Right, yeah, they, right, right. They yeah. eat those poppers and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. It's so much fun, especially when they're schooled up out in the middle and stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 They get on that grunion run pretty good back in the bay back there too. Oh, with yeah. this time of the year, right? Yeah. Well, um, you get the top water bit bite during the grunion run. It's pretty impressive that's so cool that's, that's fun. it's crazy what a what a tank of anchovy will do to so many different fishery you know what <laughs> yeah, i mean like you could be there without it and then you start sprinkling some of that around and man a lot of things come to life right i mean they're ca- totally catchable if they're if they're doing the right thing and they're all schooled up out in the middle of the back bay you can catch them on everything that's cool. you know what i mean but if they're not there's areas in the back bay where you just it, it seems like there's nothing around you take a tank of that stuff back there and start chilling it's like oh gather them up yeah, they are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Hey, uh, mentioned it yesterday. Um, we have a big sale going on our shop page at Let's Talk Hookup.com. A lot of people took advantage of it yesterday. Uh, got a lot of orders, and uh, we were continuing it while supplies last. I mean, some crazy deals. Uh, AFCO Vertex shirts, really great button up travel shirts, regularly $54 for 29 bucks. The Horizon Weatherproof Fleece Jacket, one of my favorites. I wear it every day. $118 normally, going to sell them for 74 bucks. Of course, all this stuff has a Let's Talk Hookup logo on it, a nice embroidered one on the on the Horizon Fleece and the Afco Vertex. Embroidered uh, the Samurai Performance Shirt. These were flying out. This long sleeve like uh, sun shirt, regularly 35 bucks for 19 bucks. And then the Vista Performance Quarter zip fleece, regularly fifty five bucks, and less than half price, twenty seven bucks. It's all on our shop page. Let's talk hookup dot com. Just go on the shop page and uh, grab it while supplies last. And I might add too. Any order over fifty bucks gets shipped free. So Dude. watch that. Dude. So pretty good deal. Yeah, you're kicking our butt at the tackle yeah. store. I can tell you that much because yeah. I know what those things normally cost. And yeah. we don't get anywhere near oh, that. Oh yeah, and, and it's got, they're cool. They got and nice the embroidery, embroidery exactly. and, and, and all that stuff. So it's it's very very cool. Yeah, kicking uh, our butt there. Yeah, well let's go ahead and jump back on the phone. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Let's talk to Jeff. He's calling us from Ramona this morning. What's up, Jeff? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey guys, uh, I was just curious if there's any truth to this question. Uh, I know on a couple of boats and even in a store one time they, they mentioned uh, not to purchase a certain brands of uh, hooks because they're too sharp and to me that didn't really make sense because hooking the fish is what you want but once it's hooked what does the sharpness really matter so i don't want to mention any brands but i'm just curious is there any truth to that being too sharp of a hook 
What do you guys think? I, I don't think there is. No, I mean, the sharper the better. Yeah. You know, a wire size, yeah, but but sharpness, no. Yeah, I've never heard. You want a sharp myself. hook? Yeah, you want that thing to stick, especially those bigger, heavy gauge hooks. Um, you know, that's a lot of metal to stick in a fish's mouth. You really want a sharp hook. I'm not for it or against it, one, one way or the other. I, 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 I don't know. But what the theory that he's talking about are some of those hook points where they come together, rather than just being a point, there's like grooves cut in them. Right. You know? And the thought that some people I, – I think it's one of those things that when, when the hook pulls, it's just looking for you – know, you're looking for a reason why other than just, man, that's just how it goes. Sometimes it happens. But the theory that he's talking about that people had was that when the – when there's like a bunch of edges like on the point itself, that uh, that the hook will it cut aw- it'll cut away the meat that's around there, then giving you a bigger hole. Then if you do give slack, the hook can come out. So I- I'm with him. I-, I I feel the same way as these guys. I think a sharp hook is definitely what you're after. But I, I- I've certainly heard the same fear or theory too. But I-, I think it's just one of those things. If the hook just doesn't wind up in the right spot and it pulls, you're always just looking for a reason that it happened. And right. oh, that's because of this. You know, the hook yeah. the hook did that. So I'm with you. I, I think. If uh, I, I don't think I would worry about it one bit, it probably right. popped because you didn't turn the handle. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Got to turn the handle, right? Yep. Got to keep a bend in the rod. That's it. Well, they're going to yeah. complain a lot more than if they investigate the situation with a dull, super dull hook versus a sharp yeah, hook. Right. They're going to really complain about that. Yeah, yeah so. for sure. Hey, uh, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Uh, hey, big event: the 52nd annual Southwestern Yacht Club Bottom Fishing Tournament is Saturday, May 7th. Just uh, less than a couple weeks away. It's a great, great yeah. tournament with a great group of people over there at Southwestern Yacht Club. Uh, the charity uh, supports Elder Help. Uh, they have complimentary breakfast, world famous taco dinner included, thousands of raffle prizes, auction items, cash awards. They have a men's division, junior division, women's division. Uh, they have it all going on here. Uh, it's uh, uh, regular registration is 75 bucks for adults, 25 bucks for juniors. If you want to join in this super fun Southwestern Yacht Club bottom fish tournament, call Southwest. Easiest thing is just to contact Southwestern Yacht Club is at 619-222-0438. 222-0438 in the 619 area code protection. Southwestern yc.org. That is such a cool event. Oh, I fished in that thing event. a couple years over there, a couple times over the years. It is way more about a really fun get yep. together. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a tournament, and there are some ridiculously cool prizes, but there's a huge raffle. There's really, really cool people. It's a great camaraderie thing. The fish taco dinner afterwards is rad. That is a really fun, fun, fun event. Yeah, yeah. That's a great and you're Rock Cod Rick. When they, you're coming like, you're like, like the star, <laughs> that's my man. People, man. Yeah. You that's, yeah. Yeah. That's a really cool time. Yeah, it is. A Saturday, May 7th. So contact Southwestern Yacht Club and get in on that tournament. It's a fun time. Totally. For sure. Hey, I had a great text come through for the boys. Al, on the Blackman, how many guys do you prefer to fish, and what are your departure hours? And also, is it possible to do an extended trip, kind of like the San Diego does on their full-day trips? That's from Randy in Costa Mesa. Hey, Randy. Thanks for the questions. On the... On the um, time-wise, on a 12-hour, it's 6 to 6. Um, what was the other one, Rick? Uh, m- amount of people, and is it possible to pay extra for an extended trip uh, that comes in later? So any trip over 12 hours, you only have one ticket on the boat, so it's, it's really hard to extend that unless I put another another uh, ticket on it. A we're, ticket would be a captain. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah we're, we're uh, held to the 12-hour period. Um, Four-pack max. Four-pack. Yep. Cool. Four four pack on the on the black on the black yeah four yeah. four and four up to six back. on the uh, on on, on the, the Riviera, Riviera. Yeah. yes yeah all right yeah. super comfortable with that many people too right. on both right. those boats right. oh yeah right. yeah right. and then what about the bay boat you'll take four people on the four bay people boat. it depends a mixture of kids you can take five it's a, it's a, there's a lot of fishing room for the bay on the thing depends yeah right. all right mm-hmm. let's go ahead and jump into the phones Rick you got it buddy how about we talk to CB calling us from CNT this morning good morning CB welcome to Let's Talk Hookup good morning guys. Morning. Good morning. morning. Okay, Pete, Jeremy, Alan. <laughs> Tom just put a plug in for the boats, man. These guys do a great job. They get me all the tackle that I need on the boat. I just ask, and they get it. And they have all the rods, and I always keep the boat clean, and it's always ready to go. This and is your I'm superstar deck hand CB you're talking about? Ah. <laughs> I'm calling about that AFCO kit so I can get a fillet kit 
Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's cool, CB. Well, yeah, thanks for the call. Yeah. Hey, I'll see you in the morning tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Bright and early. Go catch some bluefin, hey, right? Get that yeah. coffee ready. All right, CB. Hey, keep up the good work. That's hey, cool. guys, uh, <laughs> talk very highly of your uh, your stuff there for sure. All right. Hey, let's jump back into the phones. This time we're going to talk to Mike. Call us from Fountain Valley. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Let's Talk Cook Up. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Good morning, Great. Mike. The question I have is I've been listening to your guys' new process. Not that it's your process, but Afco's process on uh, enlightening us on the Ikejimi. I always take a lot of pride. I live up here in Huntington Beach. I fish Catalina quite a bit. And when I do catch a yellowtail, try to pride myself on bleeding it out in the bucket, uh, getting it on ice right away. The part that confuses me, what I've been hearing from you guys and reading the process is, if that fish comes in and the first part of that process is to spike the fish, and I haven't done this, so I'm asking you guys, wouldn't the fish die and then yet not bleed in a bucket. Hmm. That well, the heart definitely continues to pump after the you know the 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 brain function is ceased. I mean, you're, you're right that it would probably live. It would probably live and pump even longer uh, if um, you know if it didn't. But then the stress that it's going under, like I, mean, I hate to say it this way, but like struggling. Uh, I think outweighs the benefit, but but for sure, I mean, and I only know that because you can see it. You know, when you spike that fish and keep it in water, you can watch the you can watch the blood continue to pump out of it. Not being an expert on right, that, you know, that's the, the part I haven't had any experience with. Yeah, that's yeah. the part I didn't have any experience with. I yeah, figured and, if and, that fish got spiked right away, it wouldn't bleed. But it sounds it, like it's going to bleed. It, it, it'll, it'll bleed. It's going to bleed. It yeah, bleeds, yeah. You can spike and then cut a gill. It yeah. Either it either or it doesn't really matter what order you're going to do Especially it. Right. If you're using right. the bucket with water like that, it bleeds out pretty good. Oh yeah. And you're you're right that you know being completely alive, it's probably going to pump even better. But it's also going to be struggling, and then you have a much larger lactic acid buildup, and you know, and yeah. the muscles stay a lot more tense. Like the idea is, fish comes out immediately spiked you know humane for the fish then in the bucket then then all that blood uh, coming out and you'll be amazed i mean you'll change your bucket multiple times i mean it might be fifth you know 10 minutes after you spiked it and you'll you know you'll watch blood continue to come out of it for sure now you guys spike and then bleed yeah 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 and and, and spiking is really important it is. it's probably just as important as bleeding right yeah. oh, i think so yeah you know, these guys a lot of you know, just throw a live fish in the kill bag. Yeah, beat the crap out of everything, yeah. and it's really not good for the meat. I mean, we that's one thing we really take pride in on the boat. Plenty of ice, really good, you know, fish care. Yeah, and these guys are spending good money to come out and win, you know, the best product for them to get home with. For sure. sure. And and the Ikejimi process is an added on, and and uh, like Robbie said, you could do it up to like a half an hour after mm -hmm. you can get kind of after all the mayhem is finished. Then you go do your ikijimi, and you'll be amazed at how those fish still react to that process of the ikijimi wire going up the spine. Totally. I mean, yeah. It's like pretty say, amazing. 15, 20 minutes after being spiked and bled, you yeah. run that wire up the spinal column, and that fish you'll is shaking like, still it was, shaking like it was fresh out the water. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, here's a guy that knows about spiking fish. <laughs> it's uh, Captain Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide. You got it. And that fishdope.com report today is sponsored in part by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. They have some great Easter specials that run through April while supplies last at their Old Town location only. The famous $25 lunch bag special. They have the wiggle tail pet treats that are 3 for 25 bucks. Their famous rub are three for twenty dollars, or you can get ten for only sixty bucks. Uh, you can get six of their delicious smoked cheeses for only thirty dollars, plus a free lunch bag and a pound of smoked fish, three packs of tuna jerky, and three packs of smoked cheese, all for fifty-five dollars. Get it now what while supplies deal. last at Fisherman's Processing on Taylor Street in Old Town in San Diego. What's up, Captain Dave Hansen? Well, good morning, Rick and Pete Allen. Good morning. Morning. Thanks for that cool email. You, Rick will get a kick out of that. Tell him off beer. <laughs> right but, um, on, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rick will really get a kick out of it. But, hey, gang, San Clemente Island going bananas this morning. Yellowtail, white sea bass, black sea bass, halibut, all biting on the – just outside the caves on the squid grounds there. There's a couple of boats there that – we're really having a good time this morning. Like we were talking last week, all we need is the weather to calm down. So Clemente's going off there in the cove. I know it's an early morning bite, but, man, if you're there, 
everything on the anchor in the sand in there. It's uh, pretty fun fishing, and it looks like it's going to continue on. There's plenty of bait there in the cove, so if you're thinking about going over there, that might be a good option while we wait for that tuna to swim a little closer to us. As soon as it gets across the border, it's going to be mayhem, let me tell you, but it's, <laughs> it's getting close. It's getting close, and it is. You can't even talk about how good that bluefin fishing is. I mean, people wouldn't even understand. Full limits in the dark in an hour for most boats, it's pretty insane. And it's all quality fish, 30 to 60-pound fish in the dark. And I, well, that was perfect what they said yesterday. What, Pat, wasn't it Pat that said, the guy said, God, every time I hit the bottom, I'm bit. It was pretty cool, 3,000 feet of water. Yeah, Bill, Bill Cavanaugh called, yeah. Bill, cool. Bill, yeah, Bill, Bill, yeah. Every time he hit the bottom, he's bit in 3,000 feet of water. That's pretty insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, the bottom is at 100 feet, right? Yeah, yeah. Is this a yeah. bottom, this bottom spot, of blue yeah. school, right? This spot's awesome. <laughs> yeah, really good. That's, yeah. And, then, and then Bill posted those pictures of the pedometer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's no wonder he's hitting the bottom every time. You can't uh, oh. get a lure through there. Oh, yeah, just watching from the world headquarters here, Dave, watching the boats, all of them, hey, Pacific Queen, the Condor, uh, everybody, the, the Fortune, the the Shogun, the who else came in this morning? The Intrepid came in this yeah. morning. They're all just unloading just limits and limits of bluefin this morning. And, so it's, <laughs> everybody's getting them. And this was in the weather that, you know, going into it, everybody's like, oh, well, this is going to this is gonna shut us down for a few. That, yeah. fish <laughs> bit, that fish bit right through it, no problem. Yeah, there's yeah, a all you had to do was... All you had to do was get to it. That was yeah. the big problem, just getting to it. But then, gang, up at the Channel Islands, it wants to bite up there. There was some pretty phenomenal big sea bass fishing up there. I talked to Danny that fished up this morning, and a couple of boats were fishing up there, Chinese Harbor, and had some of that quality 50-pound sea bass bite last yesterday afternoon over there at uh, Santa Cruz Island. There's some fish roaming around. It's all weather-related up there, though. The weather still is not very uh, happy to go fishing, but those guys that are getting out there are finding the fish, and they're quality big sea bass. So as soon as this thing calms down a little bit, I think we're all in store for some great fishing. And then, like Wooly was saying, the Fury went over to Catalina yesterday. They had 20 of, that, 20 of those nice barracuda in their fish count. That says a lot for the volume of barracuda over at Catalina. If you can get one through that gauntlet of California sea lions, you're pre feeling pretty happy because <laughs> those sea lions think of that as you and I would think of a piece of spaghetti. That's what that barracuda looks like to a sea lion, and they just slurp those things right down. So yeah. if you get That's a barracuda at Catalina, you got to be pretty proud of yourself. Yeah. And you heard Captain Mark Wish right here on Let's Talk Hookup yesterday talking about this is the week in his book, the man that wrote the book about sea bass fishing and yellowtail fishing oh, yeah. at Catalina. This is the week when they're going to bite. <laughs> and he, he, so far he's right, right? Right. He, he said, Clemente or Catalina, well, there you go. Clemente's exploding right now with sea bass, yellowtail, black sea bass, and halibut. So uh, as I'll soon as it. things calm down, that water, like Willie said, kind of rolled over at Catalina. So I just think we need a couple days of nice weather, and everything is going to come right back to Catalina and be just fine. Fish as far as the coast goes, go we know what's going on. But go ahead, Pete. I'm done. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, fishdope.com, of course, always the great information. You want more information like uh, Captain Dave. Captain Dave, where do you get your information? Fishdope.com, right? I get it from Danny, from guys... I, I got a couple of friends in the industry I can call, and they kind of tell me what's going on. But, yeah, but Fish Dope is the go-to. Before I ever come on the air with you guys, I talk to Danny first every Sunday morning. That's he gives right. me the lowdown of what's going on. So that's why you got to be a member of FishDope.com. 20 bucks off a new membership to FishDope.com using the code HOOKUPNOW. Lowercase, no space. HOOKUPNOW is your $20 code. And, Captain Dave, how do we find you? Well, guys, check me out at YourSaltWaterGuide.com. Our Your Saltwater Guide on all social media. It's hard to not see me. If you're not seeing me, you probably got your eyes closed. Uh, yeah, you probably sure. got your eyes closed. <laughs> Kelly and I are going yellowfin tuna fishing today down here, so stay tuned. Watch social media tomorrow. It should be pretty spectacular. The water's flat, calm, and the yellowfin are biting. <laughs> cool. All right, Captain Dave. Have fun, and uh, we'll talk to you next Sunday. See you, Dave. 
All right, guys, thanks. See ya. That's funny. All right, that's going to wrap up that report. Hands and knives, handcrafting knives to the USA for over three decades. Check out the Fish Pro Series and other custom fillet knives from Hands and knives. They're made from high carbon steel, which holds a great edge, and they're easy to sharpen. Hands and knives are the finest fillet knives ever produced, and it also offers knives for military, law enforcement, and hunting. Check handsandknives.com for more info and get that Fish Pro Series available right now at Fisherman's Processing. All right, you have a good one there? I did, yeah. Okay. I thought this was a great text especially for uh, for the guys in here. It says, uh, Morning, boys. For private boaters, we face a challenge of not being able to chum as much due to our size and our bait tank capacity. If I was able to take frozen sardines from a previous trip or ground up chum, would that be effective or would I just be a sea lion attractor or the tax man? And that's from Brian in San Diego. Yeah, I think it depends on where you're fishing. Uh, for that offshore stuff, that chunk bait, especially when the yellow fins show up, that's a great way to uh, kind of conserve bait and keep the school on the boat. Um, you know, I we've had frozen bags of sardine. We've had leftovers, especially when we were doing the lobster trips, and we'd chunk that stuff up. Um, yeah, and I know that is a challenge, especially on the smaller boats, to have enough bait to get those schools to stick. Buy an extra buy an extra scoop, throw it in a bucket, right? Yeah. no, Chunk it up. Exactly. I mean, there. I remember times, years, especially with the elephant tuna, where they'd eat the chunk better than they'd eat the right, live, right? Right. Oh, yeah. right. Five years ago or yeah. so. Um, and, and the key to that is you can take like a a big water bottle, like a half a gallon or, or, or smaller, freeze it, stick it in your bucket, put the dead bait in there, and it holds your it holds your chunk a lot better. Oh, so that's right. a good call. Yeah, right. it really keeps good. it cool. Right. Huh? right, it keeps it nice and cool. And I mean, when the elephant fishing around, what bluefin too, but the elephant fishing around, man, it's always you fill your tank, black it out, and then grab a couple five gallon buckets and fill them up. Yeah, for a chunk. Yeah, know? but I it, like that idea of putting that frozen right. uh, no water doubt. bottle in right. there. That's a frozen great idea because they great. they don't like rotten bait. No, no. well, it gets hot and yeah. hot and slimy it's quick, slimy Especially and on, soft. You know, right, yeah. it's in the sun and yeah, you know, for sure. No, that's a good one for sure. All right, hey, let's go ahead and jump back on the phones, Rick. You got it, buddy. Gary from El Cajon is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Gary. Hello. Good morning. What's up, morning. Gary? Good morning. You hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, I have a couple questions about. San Diego Bay. Uh, I used to fish when we were kids from the 50s, uh, and bay fishing has certainly changed since then. Uh, seemed like we got a lot bigger fish and more smelt, more more other fish in the bay. I was just curious about Captain Flowers' kind of opinion about how the bay is, health of the bay is doing and the fishery. And then one other question. If I was going to take a youngsters out fishing, what what depth would he fish at? So health of the health of the bay, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I grew up here all my life, and I'm uh, I'm about 20. No, so I, I, <laughs> I've been here 61 years, and, and the health of the bay is to me is it, it, it is great right now. As know? good as it's ever been. Right. I mean, back in the day, the navy was dumping a bunch of stuff in the oh, water, yeah. and now they can't do all that stuff. And for the most part, the bay is really healthy. I mean, you have you have the spot fin, you know, the cut fin croaker. You got, I mean, everything's in the bay. Yeah, bonefish. You know? Yeah, and depth wise, it depends what time of year and what baits, you know. But right now, you can wind around a little three inch to a five inch swim bait in shallow water or deep water, um, all over the whole bay. Um, when I do most of my charters with kids and stuff, I use. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them either. I use Berkeley Gulp Shrimp, three and a half inch with a half ounce lead head, fifteen pound test. Top shot with 15 pound braid on a spinning rod, and I fish all that stuff in the channel or on the channel edges, and um, that stuff gets a bit. It just gets bites. Yeah, I mean if they're biting, the gulp gets bit. I mean, even with the kids, you know, you put it in a rod holder, their attention span's not long. Next thing you know, they're bit. But a lead head and a shrimp, just let it bounce or bounce yeah. around on the right. bottom. Yeah, I keep just... it very simple. Mm-hmm. All right. Hope that helps you out. That's Thanks awesome. a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got more great info just like that. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hook Up with the boys from uh, at Cla- Captain Clower's Charters. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hook Up coming your way on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio.
One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges. How do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hook Up listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target, the expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge ling cod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. Dana Landing in Mission Bay is the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. This is Mia. Come see me and our expert staff for everything you need for your next fishing trip, food, bait, tackle, beverages, and more. Our tackle shop is certainly one of San Diego's finest. We have you covered from bay bass to big tuna and people that can help you get set up right. We also have Dougie, one of the best reel repair guys around. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle, the best rods and reels. The hottest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. We now also have Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, both fresh and saltwater tackle, right in the heart of Lemon Grove. ECBT is at the end of the 67 Freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle take 94 to Broadway and Lemon Grove. And Dana Landing is right next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. Check danalanding.com for more details. You've been waiting for it, and it's finally here. The Gamakatsu Nautilus Ringed Circle Hook is now available in sizes 4, 2, 1, and 1, 0. Oh. That's right. Those smaller, highly sought-after Gamakatsu Circle Hooks are now available in ringed and non-ringed versions down to size 4. It's the hook that will help you get that bite. The Gamakatsu Nautilus Circle Hook. Now in smaller sizes in ringed and non-ringed styles. Get it now at Select Tackle Shops. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. Spring 8 day, summer 5 day, or a fly down, fly back 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. The giant Captain Rollo's used tackle sale is back. Join us Saturday, April 30th at Seaforth Landing for our biggest sale ever. Doors open from 11 to 3. Come early for best selection, and we will see you there. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Still plenty of great show coming your way. If you want to get through, give us a call at 213-432-1090. Still plenty of time for your great questions and your texts. Yeah, and it's been a busy morning on the phones. There's actually a couple lines open right now. So if you want to get through, this would be a good time. 213-432-1090. In addition to the big, giant used tackle sale that Roll is hosting next Saturday at yeah. CC4th Landing, 11 to 3. 11 to 3. Don't want to miss it. Uh Few weeks, a couple weeks after that is the big Dana Landing on Mission Bay huge sale. That's going to be Saturday, May 14th. It all starts with Rick and I doing a live broadcast from yeah. 7 o'clock. We're not doing very many of these this year, right. so this is going to be one of the rare ones. And the sale is going to go on all day. Incredible deals on a buy two, get one freeze on several items like Gamakatsu hooks. They're going to give free spectra fills on any real purchase. Jig replacement by OCT. California Flyer Seminar by Dwayne Diego. Calico Seminar by our Dude. co-host and uh, expert Corey Sandin from Embassy Swim Baits and more. Corey's going to have a booth there too, answering your questions and stuff. Don't miss it. Saturday, May 14th. Mark your calendar. It's going to be at Dana Landing on Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com. Going to be a good day. Over that there. OCT thing too, I, I talked to um, I talked Jeff. to the guy, yeah, I talked to Jeff yesterday. That's a really cool one too. So basically, if you buy a couple of OCT jigs or if you buy one of the promos at Dana Landing, if you bring your jigs down 
down with you, he will re- that need like a new hook. Yeah, or exactly. Whatever. He'll re raise a ring on for you while you wait. So if you've got a, you know, if you whether it's an OCT or a favorite forty five or a seven X or yeah. whatever it is, if you if you need a jig re rung and you buy an OCT or you get one of the promotions at Dana Land, he'll while you wait zap a new ring on there Definitely. for you. Yeah, That's really cool. cool. Oh, Jeff's so. a great guy for sure. All right, hey, uh, great text here from Wyatt in Rancho Palos Verdes, and uh, it's a couple of good questions here. He has. Uh, I want it's a two part question. He says, "Curious is tackle provided on the Captain Clowers Charter, and I'm headed or do I need to head to the tackle sale on Saturday? Uh, <laughs> and what are some of the sample items you recommend picking up uh, to go fishing with you guys? Uh, uh, we're all inclusive. All inclusive. So you guys have We've all the tackle. All tackle. <clears throat> I mean, it, guys have their favorite jig stick. That's the one thing I kind of recommend. You know. Um, Besides that, everything's concluded on the boat, hooks, lures, jigs, you know, everything, everything we're going to need. Yeah. Uh, on the Riviera, we have, it's all the Kuma Makaira Special Edition. Wow. Nice. <clears throat> from 1X to 4X rods and um, from 80 wide all the way down to the little 10s. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Got yeah. the big stuff. Right. And then, so if somebody wants to bring their own tackle, let's say Wyatt wants to go to that giant used car tackle sale next Saturday at Seaforth, uh, if Wyatt wants to pick up some tackle, what kind of tackle should he pick up if he's going offshore with you guys? Uh, I mean, that 20 to 30 pound bait setup, that's a good one to start with if you don't have Standard, that. Standard, yeah. And then, you know, with this bigger bluefin stuff, um, you know, that those Fathom 40s are awesome. It's, okay. It's I just, that, that size for the price, you can't beat those things. And yeah. They put up with the abuse and... Um, appropriate know, that, rod. Yep, the appropriate rod for that. You know, something you can fish that 60 on, uh, yeah. especially when they're biting the jig or even the sinker rig. Yeah, and if you, Wyatt, if you go down to the tackle sale, there will be a lot of guys there that know a lot about tackle that can kind of help you out uh, a little bit. I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a frenzy, and they're going to limit, you know, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. semi-frenzy because it's very controlled. They only let so many people at a time just because it gets so hectic down there. Uh, there'll be people that you can kind of ask and say, hey, is this a good rod for, you know, fishing 40 pounds or something like that? So And lots of options. Lots of I mean, options. Lots of options. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a text that kind of backs on that same one. Uh, this was uh, asking for uh, Jeremy's advice. Jeremy, when you're fishing those big bluefin on the kite with the flyer, what size reel uh, do you re- um, oh, Pardon me. It says when you're fishing a big, big bluefin from the kite and you have all of the line going up to the kite and then all the way back down to the flyer, what size reel do you recommend um, for that procedure to pick up all that slack when you get a bite? Uh, we're fishing the 50s on the Riviera, uh, the Akuma and Kairas. Um, and then the pen fifties are great. Those are also reels. Um, you know that that line. You know something we've been experimenting with a little bit is running one thirty for most of it, and then I'm doing a short shot at two hundred. You know maybe about forty or fifty feet of it. That way, when you do get that fish straight up and down, you can really button down on them. Um, but that heavy two hundred, I think, is just too much, especially when you really got a lot of scope and there's not a lot of wind. Uh, so I've kind of gone down to that one thirty on the main line. I think that's super smart. And the beauty of, of fishing with a hollow line, like a you know a Power Pro Hollow Ace or one of the hollow spectra, is, is that that you know connection or that splice from the 130 to 200 is seamless. There's no knot. There's no nothing in your way. You don't feel. You know you you have to struggle to even feel it happening. But yeah. it gives you you know it gives you you don't have that big belly going up to the kite from your heavy line. But when things are close and that 200s on the reel, you can. You can really hammer down, and if you if you rub the swim step, or you you know you make heavier line allows you to make more mistakes and not pay the price for it. Right, Definitely. right, especially when it's got one thirty inside of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get them. Yeah. Yeah. you that's, got them. That's beef. For yeah, sure. for sure. Hey, uh, uh, let's go ahead and jump back on the phone. If you want to get through? Here's your chance. Two one three four three two ten ninety. All right, Doug and Montebello, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Doug? Good morning. Well, there's no well, way Doug he, went away. I mean, Doug is Doug. Doug is well, Doug from Montebello. I have so. a I have a, a great question. This is a really an interesting one uh, from uh, Doctor Pat in Marine Del Rey. He says, as a neurologist and longtime listener, I've been following your discussion on the Ikajimi. Great interest. Like Pete, I was able to get the brain spike and bleeding done, but could not get the circuit breaker passed. I even brought along some smaller gauge wire of my own. I think that your local rock cod, the spinal canal, at the end 
end of the tail is just too small, which I think in some cases that's it. I bought the new, the smaller, smallest Hikajimi that they have. I'm going to try that. But uh, he says, although it looks harder, I think we have to try passing it from the head down to the tail on rockfish. I'll be working on the next trip to see if it works. And uh, that's from a neurologist. That's pretty cool. So if he's doing it, he knows there's something to it, right? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so. I I will say, though, and, and, and again, it's an unfair, it was an unfair lesson because I got taught uh, when, you know, we, uh, we, we're, we're into it. Like we're really into yeah. it so, so much so that when AFCO came out with that, we asked Robbie to come down and just kind of school up all of the guys in the tackle store, which they were, they were nice enough to do. So those guys came down and kind of gave us the unfair private seminar, but just so that we could appropriately then, you know, help our customers with it. And the the fish that we all kind of got trained up on i mean it was a it was a typical local red like i mean a three oh, pounder no, two pounder a one pounder a one you know pounder. I mean? yeah it was a, this was a small fish you know okay. I mean, a, maybe a maybe a pound and a half you know what i mean it, right. was, it was a small one um now granted this was done for our benefit to to learn how to do it and so that fish was cut at the tail but it was cut farther up the tail than what we would want for maximum yield of fillet gotcha. you know what i mean so if you're cutting just to the tail, it's probably a little tougher. This fish was probably cut, I would say, two or maybe even three inches up from the uh, base of the okay. tail. It, it was mainly done for seminar purposes, you know, to teach us like this is this is exactly where right. it goes. So if you're struggling with with finding the spot from the tail, even though it might sacrifice an inch or two of the tail cut, try going a little farther forward. I'm not going to claim to be any expert. I'm not. Sure. I'm very, very new at it still. But when it was done that way, it was a pretty obvious, okay, that's clearly yeah. the spot why you're going through. All right. Well, I tried it like on a good one, like a three, mm-hmm. three and a half pounder, right? And cut it maybe an inch past the tail. Okay. I mean, pretty nice size canal there. Yeah. But I had the, the, the kind of the next size up from the smaller wire. I think that smaller wire may pass on, okay. a, on a fish like that, like a three pounder or and, something like that. And keeping in mind that you're going through the spinal canal canal not the spinal cord which right. obviously i mean it's 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 more apparent when you see it but you're not pushing that wire through the bone of the cord there's basically a little it's like a little white dot that's on top of the spinal cord on and that's that's the canal and you're running it through the canal through that yeah mm-hmm. yeah but i think dr i'm sure pat's, you were and i'm sure uh, dr pat pat's also. idea of going through the head is probably going to be a little simpler if you can find the spot you got it yeah that's yep. it yeah, yeah. I t- totally agree all right well you got a good one right i, I do yeah this is from uh from eric Texting from Del Cerro, uh, Del Cerro. When is it best to use a star drag reel and a two-speed reel? Also, what's the best setup if you have to use light gear to catch finicky tuna on a smaller reel? For example, uh, you know the small talicas and small avits and small fathoms. Uh, when do you choose better casting and better performance from star drag versus better fish fighting ability with a two-speed? Well, it depends on the size of the fish, you know, and and uh, and what they're doing. Sometimes you got to take a chance and <clears throat> use the star drag with light line to be able to get the bait to move really fast to get the bite. You know what I mean? Um, so, I guess the question is: is when do you when do you use a star drag versus a a, le, a, le, a lever drag? Yeah. Right, right. So, star drag mainly if you can get the bait to swim. A lot, a lot of the spools are a lot lighter. We have these little tiny, like a like a, um, 15s, um, that the spools just really squeak out. But I mean, if the fish are 50 pounds, it's tough to catch them on those little ones. You 40, know 50 I mean? pounds start to be right. the, the size of fish where it's like, man, you really want to have that button. Right. 40-ish and below, you can really use some light stuff and some star drag. But above that, you want to use, you know, a heavier line and, you know. In general, always a star drag is going to cast a bait better and fish a bait better. And in general, a two speed's always going to land the fish better. Correct. And yep. neither of those are right or wrong. Like, how do you right. say it's better? It's more important to get bit but not be able to land it. And how do you say it's more important to land it but not get? I mean, they're right. they're both their own thing. So you're not you're not picking a right or wrong thing there. But like you say, Correct. maybe use the size of fish as a as a general gauge. Like right. Once, once they're it- above fifty. That becomes quite a task to land that fish with the star drag reel. Right. The main thing is to get that. A lot of those fish, when they're finicky like that, to get the bait to swim quick. And the mm-hmm. only way to get the bait to swim quick is 
skinny line, right? Yeah. You know? And part of that, and that's just in real mechanics. You know, in, in a star drag reel, you just have the spool and the spool shaft, and it's sitting on two bearings. There's no weight. Like, there's no, uh, you know, it takes a very little inertia to get that spool to start to roll, and there's very little weight behind it. On a lever drag reel, all your drag mechanisms, they're attached to the spool itself, and it's usually in a heavier-duty two-speed reel, so the spool itself weighs more. All the drag mechanisms add to it, so it takes it takes a lot more inertia to get that spool to start to roll. So when the bait is in the water and he's just trying to pull line off of the spool on a star drag reel, he's got a lot less weight to pull than trying to turn, you know, all your drags and you know, it's not much, but you know, you're you're talking about a bait that's six inches long. If he's got to pull the weight of a friction washer and a drag plate and a drag washer and a heavier spool, that's there's, there's just a lot more that he's got to deal with to try and get line off. Correct. All right. Very good. Good 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 question. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. How about Todd from Costa Mesa up next on Let's Talk Hookup? Good morning, Todd. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks. Hey, question for uh, Captain Al, um, and it's more around anchoring. Uh, so when you go to the islands or maybe even your fish in the coast, uh, how do you decide when to anchor versus when to drift? And then my second question uh, is, you know, if you're, you're anchoring overnight at Pyramid Cove, what scope do you like to uh, leave out? If you're going to spend the night on the anchor, do you, you know, do three to one or five to one? Those are Thank some you. great questions. Right. Well, on the Riviera, we have a lots of lots of road on that thing. Um, five to one, if you can get away with it, you know what I mean. Um, so you're comfortable and you can sleep. We we also set the the alarm per, per, parameter for sleeping at like up there at Clementi. Um, anchor fishing wise, um, you know. Jeremy does a little more anchoring than I do. I try not to really anchor if I don't have to, you know. <laughs> what do you think, but Jeremy? He likes to anchor a lot. Yeah, it just depends on on current. Depends on what you're fishing. Uh, obviously, you know, fishing the kelp line for calicos and things like that. I'd like to get the anchor set, get the chum line going, try to build the life. Uh, also, some of that yellowtail fishing down at the Coronado Islands. Um, if you can keep the sea lines away, it's great to be able to set up on some of those high spots and get on the spot proper and kind of build the life. You know, get the chum line going, and you know you'll watch those yellows start moving up the island, especially when there's good current. Um, you know, it's tough sometimes out there with the sea lions, especially if there's not a lot of boat traffic. You know, and the sporties aren't around. It's yeah, that, it's challenging. That control, yeah, it's that they had, they had an anchor chain going out. It's like a dinner bell for those dogs down there at the island. So. Yeah. Uh, the ideal thing is to anchor, but if you can get away with it, yeah, exactly. Which is tough. You know, you gotta. It's you know, just like everything else in fishing, that risk reward. You know, is it worth dealing with a dog or two to really get that life built, or is it you know something you got to kind of move around, get the slow trail going, and sure, stay away from the dogs. When he's mentioning three to one and five to one, what's that in reference to? The boat length, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and, well, the, the, depth. the water depth. depth. Yeah, right, water right, depth. Right, yeah, right, right, right. and and then don't forget too, you want chain. You want right. at least the boat length of chain. I like going at least one and a half. We have a 36 length. foot boat, and we had 200. We have 200 foot of chain. Holy <laughs> mackerel! That's a lot of chain, man. Yeah, that's a lot of chain. Yeah, we have, uh, I think we have 800 foot of rope on that road. And wow, road and between chain, chain on and that. road, it's almost wow. 100. And, and then we have it labeled and painted in certain spots. So uh-huh. I mean, with that much chain, you could be in 80 feet of water and let that thing rip. And it's going to keep going until the chain is all on the bottom. So you got to really be careful to the not all to pile the, it up to the color codes that are on the, yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, and and thanks a lot for that. It's very good question. Yeah, and question. anchoring is really important. Totally. So you got to got to know how to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other thing too, when you're spending the night on that, I mean, for us, you know, being on. Uh, passenger for hire vessel we always have someone on watch there's always somebody awake uh but i get it private fishing a couple buddies you guys are going to try to maybe get a little little nap in or something definitely make sure you set the parameters on the alarm on your gps that's a huge safety feature uh you know something depending on how deep you are how much chain you go down i'd usually set it that 75 to 100 feet um, that way, if the boat does move, even if the current shifts, you know, uh, it'll kind of wake you up at least so you're not drifting you know. into the island. Yeah, for sure. All right. Good tips. All right. Hey, uh, another great uh, text, this one. Um, after a day of fishing with uh, Captain Al, what's the best way to get our fish processed? Do we drop them off at Fisherman's Processing? Do we call ahead and have them meet us at the boat? Do you guys take care of it on the boat? What's the? What do we do about getting our fish cleaned up? So I'll take care of that one. Um, if they're big fish, we call Kelly. And he'll come and pick them up. Just pick them up and deliver yeah, them to the yeah, process. Yeah, client, client, obviously, on that 
$2,700 trip the client pays that bill. Yeah. Um, yeah. But He'll yeah, pick them up at the boat, the big ones, and then yep. take them right, right to Fisherman's Processing. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or, yeah. Kelly will come pick them up, no problem. If they're regular, like rock cod and yellowtail and stuff like that, um, we have trash bags at the boat. If they don't want to use Kelly for the little stuff, um, they take them to the to the fish processor, or we'll cut them on the boat. Yeah, and that Kelly is a fast fish process, fish fast, delivery, fast and easy, fast and easy fish fast and delivery. Easy fish pickup, yeah. I think, and right. he'll pick it up, and he'll also deliver your processed fish to you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Doc, 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 with yeah, Doc, Doc to door. That's yep. what right. it is. Yeah, yeah. Kelly is the man. You know, yeah. it makes it makes everybody's it makes life, life a, lot a real lot easier for a, for a pretty small nominal fee. At yeah. the end of the day, when you're right. tired and you've been Oh. Beat and you were out there all morning and you grinded so long and you got your big one and you're just toast schlepping around a 150 pounder in a giant bag that's full of ice and water and blood it's the worst part of it yeah and to right. have a service that you can yeah. call somebody and they can take care of it for up, you especially those big ones man they're not easy to handle no, it sucks, out of the boat. It yeah sucks. and he's got the equipment and stuff like yeah, that so dock the door it's a it's 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 a small price to pay to save your back yeah it's great right. i usually right. I'll, I'll give them a quick text you know when i'm passing the islands i get cell phone service and let them know and then you know you give them a heads up when i'm hitting the harbor usually he's waiting for me at the dock that's cool so that's that's pretty awesome doc i believe it's doctordoor.com it's like, it's i so think it's fast and easy fast and easy yeah. fish processing yep. pickup the fish and easy fish pickup i believe okay. we'll get more information don't quote me but i'm pretty sure yeah that's but what we'll, we'll look it up and get it more clarified but it's a it is a good service and sean was telling me that his fish delivery service like if you drop your fish off and you live in la or orange county or something like that you don't want to come back down here he says sometimes it's cheaper than ha- it's shipping it these days because shipping has Shipping's gone through the roof fortune yeah, yeah. so he, he'll do that too yep yeah I have Kelly's phone number. If you All right, want to go ahead. Out there, six one nine six seven four seven eight one four. There you go. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more. Let's talk hookup coming your way, including finding out who's got that AFCO fish care package. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier Ten Ninety ESPN Radio. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer Resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, Pinnacle Sport Fishing. Visual signs are one of our most important aspects to our charter fishing business. It's the reason myself and all of our crew all wear Costa sunglasses. With advanced polarization technology, Costa is designed to help cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color and comfort to help you see more fish. Costa was founded over 35 years ago by a group of fishermen wanting high-performance lenses for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your pursuit. Check them out at costasunglasses.com. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. All right, it's time to find out the big winner of that AFCO Fish Care Kit, whether it's going to be from the caller or texter. Jeremy's going to do us the honors. Okay, today the winner is a caller. So congratulations, Steve and Fallbrook. You've got yourself a full AFCO Fish Kit. It includes the knife bag, uh, the AFCO fillet knife, the fillet glove. You're stoked, man. Yeah, yeah, and thanks to all the callers and all the texters. Oh, there's so many texts we couldn't get through again today, but uh, thank you for all that. And thanks to Captain Al and Captain Jeremy, uh, Captain Clowers uh, uh, Fish Charters, right? And how do we find Captain Clowers Charters? Dot com. Captain Clowers, C L O W E R S. Captain Clowers dot com. Captain Clowers dot com. Six one nine eight hundred fish three four seven. That's about the easiest number. Eight hundred fish. Six one nine eight hundred fish. Yes, is the thing. And so Captain Clowers dot com. Captain if you want to do. Com. All right, great. Good luck tomorrow, Jeremy. We we'll look hey, forward thanks, to hearing guys. your report. And thank you, Captain Al. And uh, happy anniversary, by the way. Thanks, to you. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for listening today. Uh, thank Thanks to JP for manning the phones, and thanks to Adam for all he does on our Let's Talk Hookup app. We're going to be back next Saturday. We're going to have the gang from the American Angler in the studio here, O'Brien and probably Lori and That's uh, cool. all the guys. Maybe here. Ray. Yeah, Ray. Cool. Yeah, we've got a bunch in here. And then next Sunday, I'm headed for Loretto for our Loretto Rumble, but we're going to have a great show. Brandon Bono, the world's greatest fisherman from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, <laughs> along with Rick and Corey are going to be here. That's going to be a That'd great be show as hard to get them on, but he's going to be great. Hey, thanks for listening today. We'll see you next week right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app.